Hi everyone, it's Erlene of Erlene Garcia Art and of the Hollywood Carney YouTube channel. Today I will be teaching you how to make a totally awesome Frida Kahlo greeting card. Now I used clear glitter, I used fabric paint, paper flowers, black cardstock, a blank greeting card, an image of Frida Kahlo, a variety of stamp ink, and um, if I left anything out, I'll be sure and let you know what it, what all you need. I love this type of card because it looks like a, an old painting. Now I have a lot of pictures of Frida Kahlo. This is my Frida Kahlo file. I keep files on different people because I used to do large canvas uh, decoupage art. But since I don't do that any longer, I need to use up all of these little uh, pictures so I decided to make this really cool greeting card now usually I wouldn't just pull it off there and leave it all wrink wrinkly and wonky but we are going to wrinkle it up anyway so that's okay now this Spanish book I have no idea what it's about but I found it at the Goodwill and knew automatically that I wanted to use it as a background for something for Frida so take your image and use the appropriate size scissors and cut it out fairly neatly and try to get as much detail as possible. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that it's the appropriate size. Now when you rip your background images, make sure that the raw edges are facing toward you. See like right there at the top, because that gives it a real nice uh, artsy effect and I want some of the Spanish words to show in the background that may not all show but I want to get some in there use your foam tape and I will be using a lot of it to cover the back of her image this is where I keep uh, my extra paper my little pads my big pads those that's some feathered paper there that I actually purchased in a origami pad at the thrift shop. Now I'm going to choose some little floral pieces out of these tiny pads and these I purchased at Hobby Lobby which are excellent because you just need a little bit and you don't have a lot of waste. The colors that I will be choosing I feel that they would have been used in the Frida era and if some of them look a little bit too new or have a little too much brightness in it, we will be taking our stamp ink by Tim Holtz and aging it down a little. Um, I do like the leopard and the fun uh, print there. So that's what I'm going to use. And then I also felt that I wanted um, something that said Mexico because she is a very famous Mexican artist and this pad I did purchase at Hobby Lobby. It was a great find and investment. So I'm just going to tear off uh, the part of the map that says Mexico and make sure that it's placed somewhere over her shoulder. And that is just super cool. Stick your leftover scraps in the pad so you don't have a big mess. And I'm going to choose some bird wings to go with the parrots. I don't know what type of bird wings those are that I chose. And then I have a scrap piece of black cardstock, which I will be gluing her down on top of. Now I usually use a glue stick, but because I am out of my glue sticks, I am just going to use a little bit of Elmer's glue and that works just as well. I have two bottles of glitter fabric paint, a makeup sponge, a, a few pieces of scrap ribbon, and of course the Distress ink in about four or five colors. I considered using one of these little plastic roses, but I am sending this card through the mail, so I don't want it to get broken. Those glasses would have been super cool, but that's not the look that I'm looking for on this particular card. Now, if some of you have seen my other video of a art haul from the Goodwill, you would have 
seen in there that I found all of these wonderful paper flowers. And so now I finally get to use them. And there was such a large variety in there. They were all jumbled together. Of course, I straightened everything and made it neat. And now I'm so excited to use these paper flowers. Now, if you guys use them on a regular basis, please let me know what you use yours for. I'm going to put flowers around her head because she is known for wearing flowers around her head. And of course, in the original picture, she did not have them, but I just felt that it would just add a lot of oomph. Now this Elmer's glue I purchased at the 99 cent store. Um, it's a bond. You can use tacky glue that will work as well. This is the clear glitter that I'm going to be using. So put glue all over the back of her image and neatly put it on your black cardstock. What I usually do is I save my leftover gift cards and I recycle them and use them as a squeegee for whenever <coughs> I, <coughs> I do decoupage. Sorry about the coughing, I'm getting over um, bronchitis. That's why I, my voice sounds so deep. But anyway, take the card and squeegee any of the glue out from beneath the image and then cut around the image, leaving a little bit of the black showing. Now, it doesn't have to be totally neat because we will be putting um, fabric glue around that edge. So now let's go to the background of the card. Continue ripping any of your background pieces. Make sure the edge is showing, the rough edge, and place them where you think you might want them to be, putting Frida on top so you can have an idea of where it's going to be laying, because once you glue them down, you can't really alter where they should be. And make sure that when you glue it down, each piece is laid neatly without any glue bubbles because you don't want it to look uh, puffy. And it is okay to keep putting her on top of the background so you can make sure that everything is balanced. I usually do that a few times myself because I want everything to be very pleasing to the eye. Now with the little leftover pieces of maps, I am making little tiny corners because you want the bottom of the card to be balanced with the top as well. So now that your four or five pieces are glued nicely down and flat, I'm going to choose Scattered Straw Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to go around the whole card, not covering it totally, but in certain places where it's bright. Remember, we are aging it. So this is pumice stone and I am going to mix that in as well. It's kind of like um, a gray color. Also, I always use makeup sponges for blending. I find it um, absorbs and releases color so much better than those little daubers. And don't forget to uh, age part of Frida's dress, birds, and skin and this is walnut stain and as you can tell I'm working uh, light to dark I have more control over it that way the next color I will be using is black soot but if you don't have stamp ink you can use watercolor you can also use your colored chalk and that will give a similar effect you can lightly use markers also but be very light handed on it. I enjoy making greeting cards a lot and I have to come up with new ideas all the time, but this doesn't necessarily have to be a greeting card. You can make it into a magnet or even one of those party picks that you put in a gift bag. You take a little skinny dowel and glue it to the back and cover it with 
black card stock and that looks really cool. I've sold a ton of those as well. This color is Peacock Feathers. And oh my gosh, I just love that teal color. It really makes the cards stand out a lot. So we're going to now choose Seedless Preserves. And that is like a wine or a berry color. Awesome. I just love that subtle brightness that it adds to it. So now we're going to let that air dry for about a minute or two. And we're going to crinkle up Frida. Yes, I said crinkle her up. Uh, don't be afraid to do this part. This gives it that painting look that we're trying to establish. So lightly bend and crinkle until you see some little tiny lines. And those little lines we are going to highlight with your stamp ink. But first we wanna do this. And this is the exact reason why I said to use your scrap black cardstock because there's no need to use a good piece on this one since we are bending it. So now fill up the back with your foam tape. Make sure it's secure. And then now we're lightly going to take our makeup sponge and just brush the top of the wrinkles of the picture. And it will give it that old world museum look that we're trying to achieve. And just use whatever ink you have on your makeup sponge. I'm sure it's probably still damp. And make sure that there isn't any white piece of paper showing. You do not want any white in this project. So now we're going to choose um, some of our paper flowers. In the beginning, I was going to use ribbon flowers and plastic flowers, but the plastic, I'm afraid, might break since I'm sending this card through the mail. And with the ribbon flowers, when you age them with the stamp ink, um, make sure you give enough time for them to dry because it is fabric. So what I'm going to do is choose my flowers and I will be choosing some rich colors that look like they're from the Frida era. And what I'm going to do is pull them off the stem or cut them off the wire and pull them apart. When you pull them apart, make sure the bulb that you will be hot gluing stays intact because again, you don't want any part of your artwork falling apart. So what I did here, this one particular flower, I love the richness of that peachy yellow, but it was too big. So I'm just going to tear it in pieces and stick it behind her head. So let's start layering the flowers and you may not want to use your good scissors on the little tiny wires. I am also going to save the little green leaves because you want it to look natural. All flowers have a little bit of green leaves in there. So when you take this part apart, make sure, like I said, that the bulb stays intact because you don't want it to fall apart. And we can use that little piece on another part of her head. And don't be afraid to lift up some of the petals and glue underneath because that will give it the more realistic effect. And also bring flowers forward. You may wanna cover up a little part of her hairline or just cover up a little part of the ear because it will give it more of a 3D um, effect. And I really like it. This is one of my favorite cards I think that I've ever made. And I'm creating it for my mom. She loves Frida and she loves the Mexican culture, the art, those uh, beautiful bright flowers that are made out of tissue paper that you buy for the fiestas. So let's get back to the card. Look how cool it is coming out. I am just totally loving it. Um, I chose that little dark burgundy flower to pick up the seedless preserves uh, ink 
and I think it's just perfect. So don't forget, when you're using your glue gun, it makes those uh, spider webby things. Be sure and make sure all of those uh, glue strings are off of your card. When you're selling your greeting cards at fairs, boutiques, or art shows, um, always make sure that you have some type of self-adhesive sealing bag that is possibly made out of cellophane that you can put each greeting card into so it protects it and it looks more professional. And when people are looking at your cards, they're not getting fingerprints or anything on your card. Um, sometimes I buy mine from the paper studio at Hobby Lobby, and I think it's called card storage, and they're about $4, and I think there's about 20 pieces in the bag. So let's continue. This is antique linen, and it's just the right color to age the flowers up without making it look too dark. So now let's start with the fabric paint. This is a glittery clear, and what we're going to do is outline, starting with the black cardstock, and we're going to go all the way around. We're going to enhance the birds, her dress, the beak, her eyebrows, the eyes, the feathers, her ring, her cigarette, anywhere where you feel that the light will hit is where you're going to put a little dab of this fabric paint. I love doing this part. I have gone through so many bottles of this fabric paint. It's just perfect for every type of art project, not just fabric. I've even used it in my bottle cap jewelry. You can use it on everything. So also enhance a little bit of the flowers too. Don't forget her lips. And if you do a little bit of a smear, it's quite all right. Just go back right over it and continue. And also some people ask, do I have to buy all of the colors? No, you do not have to buy all of the colors. This one color will work on every background that you use it on. You don't have to buy the golds or the reds or the pinks or the blues unless it's something you really want to invest in. I happen to have every color of the rainbow because I love every color of the rainbow. Again, the name of it is Glittering Crystal and Glittering Gold, and they're by Scribbles, and I think they sell for about $1.29. And keep in mind that this will take about five to 10 minutes to dry. If you decide to use your heat tool on it, do a little test before you do that. And now I'm going to put a little bit of the glittering gold on the background to enhance our background papers, the ink, and it'll just give a little bit of a subtle glisten. And because this fabric paint is like a glue, I'm going to take a clear glitter. This is totally optional if you have it or not, but the clear glitter, I am going to sprinkle it all over the card and then shake it off of the card immediately. We basically just want the essence of the glitter to give a 3D effect. And so now after you shake it off, make sure you don't smear any of your paint. We're going to use a dark black pigment ink by Colorbox and put your makeup sponge in it and we're going to just go along the very edges of the greeting card and this will make all of your colors come together. I love this part. This is one of my favorite parts and we are almost done. I'm totally loving it. Always make sure that you sign your artwork or imprint your name somewhere on it so you could possibly have future potential customers. I'm going to take the makeup sponge and totally go around the back side of the card because sometimes when we're working with ink, we might accidentally touch the back. So you might as well continue the work. It gives it a finished look. And I also do the inside and the envelope. 
So while that takes a couple of minutes to dry, we need to look in our ribbon bin and see what type of super skinny type of ribbon that we have that we can enhance the card. Of course, this is optional, but if you have the ribbon, use it. It just adds more dimension to your card. You will be needing about three different colors and make sure they are complementary and to the era or something similar to what you think would be the era of your image. Also, if need be, you can use your stamp ink to age them, so don't forget about that. And once you cut your ribbon to two and a half lengths of the card, just do a basic over the hand knot and make sure that you tie it snugly so it doesn't come undone and then trim the edges and they don't all have to be the same size sometimes it looks nice if it's a little bit uneven and then we are almost done yes and keep in mind when you're mailing this card it may take a little bit more postage because it is a poofier card and take a photograph of it so you can have a great memory of a great piece of artwork that you did. Wow, look at that. I am so proud of myself and I am so happy to share this idea with you. I hope you put your own spin on it. Keep in mind, you can use any image, a family member, a friend, a vintage photograph. It will be amazing. And I have another Frida project coming up. You will love it, hopefully as much as you've liked this one. And I really appreciate the time that you took to sit and watch this video with me. And please check out my other videos if you like designing jewelry, more greeting cards, handbags, tarot bags, cell phone bags, you name it. There's lots of fun projects for us to work together on. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will be happy to answer them as soon as possible. Check out my Etsy store, subscribe, and have a happy day. Thanks again, bye.